Hey girls, hey. Hey boys, hey. Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a minute. I'm back. It's Mama Beauties here, straight from North Carolina, bringing you her first wanted video. Yes, I am going to do a live tonight or tomorrow and catch up with you guys. It has been crazy few weeks. I did get a car, so I'm super happy about that. And we are just going to try to become activists and help in this true crime community. We have lost so many children over the last few weeks. It has been heartbreaking. It's taken a toll on all of us. And so, what I have decided is, I know that I have been around seven murderers in my life, and they are walking among us. They are in the grocery stores beside of us. They are in some of our lives. It is crazy how many people are out there that are wanted by the police. So, we are going to change our direction of this channel to wanted cases. And we're talking about the most wanted, you guys. We need to be activists. We need to get in and be vigilant and be looking for these people because these people don't stop dating. These people may kill again. And so I have been getting one of my new jobs up and off the ground and I have quit one of my seven jobs and so I haven't been able to give you guys much content. So I'm going to give you this content about Wanted Brian Keith Freeman, and we have to say his middle name because there's a lovely author out there that has the same name as him, but not the same middle name. So it's Brian Keith Freeman, and today's wanted case is about Brian. This man is wanted in the death of his fiance, 36 year old Lori Hanna. Brian is in his early 40s and is suspected of going into Lori's home and killing her by lacerating her throat. Relatives of Brian, Keith Freeman, called the police the day after the murder because Brian allegedly had told them that he killed Lori in a text message. In that message, Brian texted his relative that he had killed Lori last night. Lori's daughter had been away from the home that night due to being on her school spring break. This all happened in March of 2017, you guys. Once officers got the call from Brian's relative he had texted about killing Lori, they went to Lori's single-story home and found Lori's body lifeless in a bedroom with, again, her throat cut. This all happened on in March 2000, blah, 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 in March 2017, and this man is still at large, you guys. Brian Keith Freeman was last seen on March 23rd, 2017, just hours after police found Lori's body in her Lenoke County, Arkansas home. Um, two of Brian's friends from Central Arkansas were charged with making false statements to marshals to aid in Brian Keith Freeman's escape. David Counts and Melissa Brock of Arkansas were both charged with making false statements, which aided in Brian Freeman getting away. At one point, Brian called a friend while Brian was in Sulphur Springs, Texas, and admitted he had messed up and the friend would never see him again. This is all according to court affidavits filed in federal court a month later. Now, Brian Keith Freeman is not only facing capital murder, but also with traveling in interstate commerce to avoid prosecution. The documents report that they found Mr. Freeman's Dodge Ram pickup abandoned one week later in Royce City, Texas, or near it. He had left his wallet and two cell phones inside. They searched for his remains and never found a trace of Brian Keith Freeman. I think he left all that behind on purpose to start a new life. One year later, in 2018, officers find out Brian had lived with his friends, David and Melissa, right before the alleged murders. Alleged murders. Just one. In the affidavit filed in 2018, we find out that the night before Lori's murder, Brian gets this same Melissa and her husband Earl to drive him to Lori's house and let him out and circle the block to get him in front of her house again. 
She did this two times and then lied to police about it later. She admits in October of 2017, when law enforcement interviews her again, that she had witnessed blood in her car after picking him up on one of those times. She also tells them in that interview that David had actually helped Brian Keith Freeman to stage his truck, to stage his truck in Royce, Texas. According to the affidavit, Melissa admits to Brian having people meet him where the truck was staged to help him elude police. She also tells authorities that Brian Keith Freeman had a new phone number and a new cell phone, which he kept in touch with David Counts and some woman named Michelle Bias. This is all allegedly. David Counts was brought into the say another interview himself in January 2018 and admitted he had lied about not seeing blood in the back of the Suburban and about later having contact with Brian Keith Freeman. He then tells the judge when interviewed, he is done lying to marshals. Earl Brock, Melissa Brock's husband, admits in another affidavit that after they took Brian Keith Freeman home to their house after circling the block to pick him up and around 12.30 a.m. Earl went outside and caught Brian Keith Freeman allegedly burning a fire on his property. He happened to be outside bottle feeding one of his goats when he saw this fire burning and ran over to extinguish it and only found out only to find out that Freeman had actually started it. Marshalls recovered burned clothing from that spot such as blue jeans, t-shirt material, and sweatshirt material. I guarantee Marshalls finding out Brian's truck had been staged was not news to them because they completed a thorough search called Operation Backtrack for Brian Keith Freeman's remains in the rural area of Roy City, Texas, where that truck was located. They also figured out his last call origin originated near his truck, which he, which we know now was to call to get someone to come pick him up where he had staged the truck. For the last two and a half years, they have searched that area for his remains. Marshalls has followed up on 100, hundreds of leads. All of them were dead ends. Marshalls do have a damning phone call made to a friend of Brian's where he tells her he had done a horrible thing and that he was somewhere in Texas and abandoned his truck. He told that friend he walked away from the truck into the woods and he wanted to off himself. He asked them to say a prayer with him, and they supposedly did. Then Brian makes the comment, I hope God forgives me for this. And that was the last that anyone heard of Brian Keith Freeman. I personally think this call was also staged just like the truck. They have searched that area with 20 cadaver dogs from all around the nation and their handlers. They had anthropologists with marshals searching to distinguish between human and animal skeletal remains, but nothing found was human. They searched 3,700 acres of woods, swamplands, open fields, and streams, yet found nothing. Brian is a coward. He is lying about it all. He would never harm himself, in my opinion, unless he got caught. U.S. Marshals are now working on how he got out of Royce County and where he went, and that's where we come in. Let's help Lori Lynn Hanna's mother get justice and help look for this man everywhere. Judy West has pled with the public to help her to find Brian Keith Freeman and have cops bring him in. Lori Hanna was just 35 years old when Brian suspectedly went into her home and cut her throat and he's also wanted for ending her life. Lori was a single mom who trusted Brian Keith Freeman. And at one, at one point, you guys, I do not doubt some unsuspecting woman is dating this man right now. Lori's mom, Judy, tells us that Lori called off her engagement with Brian Keith Freeman just days before she was found murdered. So if you are dating this man, please do not call things off for your safety. Brian has several distinct tattoos, ladies, which he may have covered by now, but we know that they're there. So they used to be black stars on his elbow, the name Kiwi on his left forearm, 
the name Jackson on his right forearm, and the names Michaela and Justin and more stars with a moon on his upper right arm. Again, these may be covered, but I'm sure some kind of tattoo is still there. There is a huge reward offered for information leading the, to the capture of Brian Keith Freeman. Anyone with information is asked to contact U.S. Marshals at 501-324-6256. And I will give you that information again after I show you his pictures. I plan on going live just to catch up with you guys. Definitely going to have a Monday Mama meeting tomorrow night. So if you are needing some community and some loving on, then definitely be there tomorrow night at um, probably 6 p.m. I'm going to do the Monday Mama meeting. So I am looking forward to it as much as you guys. Here is the pictures of this man. And I'm telling you, there is someone out there that could be dating this guy. And I doubt he even goes by Brian anymore. Yep, that's our boy, and we are going to be on the lookout for him. This is the precious um, fa woman that lost her life and the daughter that lost her mother. This story touches my heart because I was away at church camp when I came home to my stepfather murdering my mother. So I know what it's like to be a little girl of a mother who was a victim of domestic violence and it, they ended her life. And it's just heartbreaking and I want to bring justice for this little girl. I didn't get justice in my case and most of you guys know that. So it's time that we work hard to get justice in these other cases. These people could be in your community. Brian Keith Freeman could be standing next to you when you're pumping gas. Do not approach him. Do not try to handle anything yourself. Just call 501-324-6256. And let them know that you believe you saw him. Thank you, guys. We're going to do this together. I was sending out all my nail strips, and I'm still doing a fabulous job on those. And I saw that I had a lady in every state. I had a lady in almost every state so we could have somebody in each state looking out, being vigilant for these people. And it might take five years from now or 10 years from now, but if we could help catch one person, I would just be elated, you guys. And even if we don't, I we are trying and we are getting the information out there. So if you see a wanted case on Live PD or you see a wanted case on Investigation Discovery or, or A&E or something like that, please email me at mamabeauties at gmail.com and I will get all the information I can on it and we will put them on blast and get their name out there, get their face out there and we will be vigilant. So, I mean, we are all in a position where we could help when it comes to these babies losing their lives and these parents dropping the ball and these, um, you know, agencies not properly um, handling things. And we just keep seeing, God rest their souls, Faye, Harley, Evelyn, Gannon. It's just breaking my heart and I feel helpless and I feel like a victim because I can't help these people. And so we can, ladies, we can help find these wanted people and we do not have to put ourselves at jeopardy we just call in the big dogs and they'll go take care of it but could you imagine if you were the reason why one of these people got caught not only the bragging rights but you would get a, a reward and it, I would never take the reward if that was ever to happen to me I would donate the reward to missing and exploited children because that's going on way too much anymore 
I am going to start monetizing my wanted videos um, because I want to be able to spend more time with you guys and not have to work so many of my other jobs to make money. And I had to buy my own car, so that's where I've been, you guys. I had to work my businesses hardcore so I could save up enough money to buy a car because I don't get income tax because stupid student loans. So, but I'm back, you guys. I got wills and I don't plan on going anywhere. I'm actually self-quarantining just to make sure that me and my baby don't get sick and I don't get my grandbaby sick. So, bye. I'll be seeing a bunch of you. Bye, girls. Bye. Bye, boys. Bye.